I can graph the linear equation written in slope intercept form. I can rearrange an equation into slope intercept form. I can create an equation in slope intercept form. So this whole thing is about slope intercept form. Um, we're going to talk about vocab here. And this whole week we've been dealing with slope intercept form. You had an article back on Monday. Then we had a lesson on Tuesday where we were talking about slope, which slope is part of slope intercept form. Um, your delta math assignment, you're taking an equation in standard form and rewriting it into this form of slope intercept form. And now we're, we're covering it more specifically. So it's y equals mx plus b. This is the same thing from eighth grade. You guys have learned this before. Slope, it's just a number. It's a ratio that describes the steepness of a graph. It's the lowercase m, always lowercase, never uppercase. Y-intercept, it's a number representing the graph crosses at, where the graph crosses at the y-axis. It's also just a value. These are numbers, m and b are numbers. Um, we call it b. So wherever your graph, your line, intersects or intercepts the y-axis, that is the y-intercept. And when you're in slope intercept form, it's really, really easy to just look at it and say, oh, there's my slope. It's the coefficient of the x term. It's four, it's one half, it's negative three. Okay, whatever number is there is your slope. And just look here, whatever number is here, this is a constant all the time. It could be 10, it could be negative five, it could be a decimal, it could be um, five tenths, it could be zero. That's also okay. Your slope can be zero, your y intercept can be zero. These are just numbers. M and B are just numbers. And then Y and X are your two variables that you have. There's a lot here on this slide. Um, when you take notes on this, you don't need to write all this down. If you're doing virtual notes, you just want to screenshot it and add it, that's fine. But what to, something that can kind of help you remember when you're graphing, Y equals MX plus B, B is what you begin with. Okay, it is the number that you start with, you begin with it, the word begin starts with B, you only use it once, and then you're done with it. M, it shows you how you move, so it's the slope. Um, from your beginning point, you're going to move a certain way, and you're going to use the slope, another M word, many times, all right, many times. And then these are basically your steps. So find the slope and the y-intercept from the equation. So if your equation is in slope-intercept form, all you got to do is look to see what is the M, what is the B. And there's an example here that they're showing you. This is the, the most basic of linear equations, the most common one, Y equals X. Okay, that's this line that's graphed here, Y equals X. And uh, you can tell what the slope is because in front of the X is an invisible one. So the slope is 1. And I'm not adding anything here. I don't see anything. So my y-intercept is 0 plus 0. So once you know what the slope and the y-intercept is, step 2 is plot the y-intercept. So that's why I'm right here at the origin, where I have the point 0 comma 0. It's always going to be the x-coordinate is um, 0, and then you're going to have some y-coordinate somewhere along the y-axis. And once you start here, this is where you begin, and then you use your slope. If your slope is 1, that's the same as 1 over 1, or rise 1, run 1. And you can plot a point and then connect the line. Step 3, plot the second point using the slope, rise over run, and then you would draw your line. So I have six of you that responded to this yesterday. Um, which variable in the slope-intercept formula represents the slope? I'm going to give you a minute right now. If you haven't done that one yet, please go ahead and answer it. Which variable represents the slope?
you don't have very many to pick from. There's there's four variables in slope-intercept form, right? Y, M, X, B. Which of those is the slope? Type what you think it is. All right, so M from the slope-intercept formula represents slope correct. In an equation such as y equals mx plus b, the slope would be represented as m. Absolutely. The m. Good. Uh, keep it lowercase. Okay, it's lowercase m always. Right? Don't capitalize it. All the letters in slope-intercept form are in lowercase. Okay, y equals mx plus b. All lowercase letters. All lowercase variables. And so this is going to be a video for you. Um, I'm going to give you a little more time right now, probably to do a little bit of this stuff, because the reason this was on here yesterday as an asynchronous was I wanted you to try to go through it on your own first, and then we we're going to come back and go through it. Okay, so we have graphing y equals mx plus b. This is how you can rewrite an equation, which is just like your delta math assignment. So you're given an equation. In this case, 2x plus y equals 4. This is standard form. If I want to rewrite it in slope-intercept form, well, then I would first move the x term to the other side. Uh, if I happen to have a coefficient here in front of the y that was not 1, I'd have to divide every single thing by that. But since I don't have a different coefficient besides 1, this is good. This is slope-intercept. And then from that, I can quickly find out the slope which is negative two, or you can think of it as negative two over one because you do want a ratio when you're graphing. You want a rise and a run. You're given a integer, you can easily turn it into a fraction by putting one in the denominator. That won't change the value. And then the y-intercept is the constant being added here, it's four. So we're gonna plot the point zero, four over here. And that's where we're starting. Then step four is plot a second point using the slope. Okay, so if my slope is negative two over one, uh, I could rise two and run one, but then I'd be off the graph. So if I drop two and run one, then I'm on the graph. So you can reverse the pattern. Down two over one, down two over one. Draw a line through the points, and you've rewritten an equation in a slope-intercept form and graphed it. And then that's what you were going to do on this slide here. Okay, uh, you got another video, and then we had how to create an equation, write the equation of each line in slope-intercept form. So if I'm given the fact that the slope is 3 and that 2, 5 is on the line, well, I can find the y-intercept by starting with slope-intercept form. And then of these four variables, y, m, x, and b, I know m, I know x, I know y. So I can substitute them in. y is 5, m is 3, x is 2. And then I can solve for this one lone unknown variable. Multiply 3 and 2, you get 6. Subtract 6 from both sides, b is negative 1. So now that you know that b is negative 1 and the slope is 3, you can come over here, write slope-intercept form, and then just replace m and b with what you know. m is 3, b is negative 1, and now you have the slope-intercept form of an equation where its slope is 3 and it passes through this exact point on the line. So if you're given a point, if you're given the slope, if you're given a point, or you're given the y-intercept, um, you can figure out these things. And so the last slide that you had was to try that. All right. And so looking at this, not too many of you got a chance to try these slides. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to try the slides, and then we'll go over it. Probably not as long as we typically have, okay? But you are going to have some time right now, let's say, until... Uh, 12...
April 15. Okay, I'm going to put you into student pace mode again. And you now have until 12.15, 14 minutes. Uh, I would go right into trying these slides. Okay, so at this point, because you were supposed to do this yesterday, just try the slides. Right? You can go back and watch the videos later. But for right now, just go in and try those slides. And in that time, I'm going to go through and give you guys some feedback um, on the ones that you did answer. So everyone should be in Pear Deck going through and trying those interactive slides. Specifically slides six, eight, and 11. Let's add that try. Number six, eight, 11. There you go. Those are the three you should focus on right now, six, eight, and 11. Okay, so you guys, we're going to um, stop student pace, and we're going to go to this slide here, slide six. And with you, I'm going to go over slide six, eight, and 11. All right, so hopefully you can let me make sure that you can see what I'm going to present in Chrome tab. Is this one? Yeah. All right. So um, on this one, graphing y equals mx plus b. Let me. All right. So if we or on this slide and we want to graph this equation, we have to realize that this equation is in slope-intercept form, which means that um, this is what I'm going to begin with. That's my starting value. I just covered up the plus sign, which made it a little bit weird. Okay, so let's make this a little bit smaller. All right, so um, my B is 2. And then the other thing that I need from this is my slope, which is 3 fourths. That's my M. Once you identify those two things, then you can graph a line. And so you always begin with your y-intercept, a positive 2. That's always on your y-axis. So positive 2 is right here. And then using my slope from that point, I'm going to rise and run. I'm going to rise 3 units. So I go up 1, 2, 3, and then run over 4. So my second point should be right there, even though it doesn't really look like a point. <laughs> up three over four. And so you can keep repeating that from where you left off, up three over four. 
and then you can uh, reverse it the opposite way to get points going the opposite direction. So I could go down three units and over four. I go down three, over four, down three, over four. And once you have all your points, well then you can draw a line through these points. Make our line yellow for no reason. Okay. And remember, when you graph a line, you do want to put arrows at the end. Okay. So this is how you do slide number six. And now we're going to look at slide eight. Okay. And so this slide says that we are going to graph the line described by 3x plus y equals 2. Step one, rewrite it in slope intercept form. So to do that, I need to... Um, get this 3x term on the opposite side. So I need to actually subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. Okay, and then I can rewrite my equation as y equals. Well, um, on the right-hand side, I have 2 and I have negative 3x. And I want it in slope-intercept form. Okay, remember slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So I want that x term first. So negative 3x plus 2, All right? So right here, this is step 1. Check, we're done with that. Step 2, we are going to identify the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope is whatever is right here. And that is my m. m is slope. Slope is negative 3. And since I'm going to be graphing, I do want this as a ratio. So anytime you have a number and it's not a fraction, all you have to do is put a 1 in the denominator. And that'll turn your integer into a ratio of rise over run. The other value I need is my y-intercept. b is 2. Okay, so I identified the slope and the y-intercept. I'm done with that step. Step 3, plot the point 0b. Okay, 0b. Well, 0 comma b is 0 comma 2 which is here, and then step four, plot a second point using the slope. So let's switch over to a different color. I'm going to use purple now. And from my beginning point, from my slope intercept, I'm going to rise three units, and then I'm going to run one unit. So and, it, and it's negative, it's a negative slope, so I have to make sure it does go downhill. So I can go up from two, which puts me at five, and then one to the left. Because if I went one to the right, that would not be a downhill slope. I would run off the graph at this point, so I'm gonna reverse it, I'm gonna go down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. Looks like I get one more point on here. So, even though my points are the prettiest, um, <laughs> you know, you should put as many as you can when you're graphing by hand. If you're using a computer program, that's going to take two points and make a perfectly straight line out of it. You don't need a plot a lot of points, but for something like this, you should have a lot of points. So here we're going to draw a line through our points as best we can. That's weird. It kind of like curved at the end. And so my arrows to show that it's going on in both directions. Um, that's how you do slide eight, right? And the last slide we're going to go over is slide 11, right here. So we're creating an equation. And in this problem, they're telling us some information. They say that the slope is negative one, all right? I know that m equals negative one. Awesome. They're also telling me that I have an ordered pair, three, two, three, two. And in that ordered pair, the x coordinate is always first. So my x is three. And in here, my y coordinate is second. So it is two. So just from the information, I know three of the four variables in slope intercept form. And now what I'm going to do is plug that information in. So I'm going to replace the y with 2. I'm going to replace the m with negative 1. 
I'm going to replace the X with 3. And I don't know the B, so that's going to stay just like that. But now, because I have an equation where there's one unknown, I can solve for it. I can solve for B. Same way we solve, you know, all kinds of equations. So this turns into 2 equals negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 plus B. And I got to get B isolated, so I got to get rid of this uh, negative 3 by adding 3 to both sides. All right. And so B is actually equal to 5. So we now know that B is 5 over here. B equals 5. Um, I know all the, the pieces of slope-intercept form now. So when I write an equation in slope-intercept form, I don't want to substitute them all in. I am going to leave the Y and the X there. The only thing that I want to put in is the slope so negative one goes here and I want to put in the B okay so five goes here so my total final answer is that you can rewrite it again y equals negative one x plus five this is the answer to that problem this is one way if you're given a point and a slope you can figure it out one way you can do that alrighty so that